day of 2024 with a praise. Come on, lift your voice. Say hallelujah. Talk to the Lord. Tell him how sweet he is. Tell him how awesome he is. Tell him that he's worthy. Lift your voice. Give us to hear a praise on today. Amen. We are going to move forward in this service. We are going to give it into the hands of Elder Lattimore and the praise team. Do not hesitate to give God a praise on today. Praise him for what he's done. Praise him for what he's doing. And praise him in advance for the things that he has in store for you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Let's put our hands together this morning for Jesus. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continue to be in my life. My soul shall live for those in the Lord.
God could do it. He died for us. Shed his blood. Hung on the cross. Just so that we could be saved. Just so we could be delivered. Just so we could be set free. Woo. I just need about more people to claim their freedom right now.
fell back off the table, hit his eye on the chair, and landed on the floor. So I said that to say all this. Josiah tried to keep Russiah out of his stuff, but he, Russiah was determined to get to the place, and now he's got a black eye, a bruise on his face, and a knot in the middle of his forehead. So if Russiah would have just listened to Josiah, not messing with his stuff, he wouldn't have got the, the marks on his face. But if we just look at what God takes things and moves them out of our way,
when our favorite team yes, make a basket or a touchdown, and the way we act, yes, that's praise. Yes, so once again, all God wants is a praise. Likewise. I remember when my daughters was running track. Poor Brittany. Lord help her. She had a hard time. She wasn't like her daddy. She was more like her mom. When it came to that running. So Brittany would always come in last. But even though she did, I was up in them bleachers screaming, hollering for her. Amen. Mike, poor thing. Lord help me, what's wrong with my children? He was on the E team in basketball, Sister Jason. E team, the last team. Not the first, but he was on the last one. When Mike was on that last team, there he come in the door now. Is that him? When Mike was on that, yeah, been waiting for him and looking for him. When Mike was on the E team in basketball, I turn around and I would shout hard. And I had an extra cheerleader, Brother Roman. Yes, Brother Roman, how was we screaming? Woo! <laughs> yes, sir! We made him think that he was on the A team. We made him think he was playing varsity. <laughs> and it wasn't his sport. So I'm saying that we, we praise our children, we praise our favorite teams, we praise, oh my God, women and men, we praise cars, but we need to praise our God. The bigger your praise, the bigger your God. So I'm asking you one time before we move this over and do what we do, put them hands together and give God the best praise. Thank you. 
looked at one time and it is 1135. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And the mic was just pulling up. I shouldn't have to be catching you, looking, waiting to see when you're coming. I'm on my way up. Did we really know what you were just doing that? I brought you at church on time, so. Let's pray! Equals victory! 
Y'all, I'm happy. I feel good. It's good. I came in not feeling the best this morning. But then when God came in the room, I started feeling a whole lot better. Oh, yeah. All right now. So I don't feel too bad today. I like my wife today. All right Come on, somebody. I'm not beating with the elders and ministers today. Yeah. The organist is smiling today. Well. The drum, oh, y'all ain't hear me. I feel pretty good today. So I got something to be happy about. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Got something to be happy about. Thank you, I didn't have to tell Sister Genesis to smile today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Turn to the mic, Sister Lily. Come on, give me that mic, brother. Y'all didn't hear what she said. Come on, sister. Let me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to move on with this. Uh, because I need at least a few minutes to preach. Uh, so, brother Roman, wait a minute. Hold on, hold on. I think. I might be mistaken, but I think the Lord done did something for Sister Eleanor. Uh -huh. She got a testimony. Oh, yeah. Just don't know. Yeah, yeah. Go, go give her that microphone yeah. real quick. Yeah. And then we're going to move around.
He's a great God. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. The word says if I had 10,000 tongues, it would not be enough to thank him, to praise him, to give him what he is worthy of. So I'm sure going to try. Amen. So we thank the Lord for today. Thank you. In the same spirit that we have right now, we want to sow. We want to sow into this ministry that the Lord may give the increase to that what we give on today. We can give a few different ways. We can give electronically, cash app, money sign, or Bible Center, IA. We can give on Gilbert by the Bible Center Church of God in Christ. We can give at the card swipe, my left or right. And we can give in the offering plate. We want to make sure that in the same spirit of worship and praise that we give and we plant just a small seed, whatever that it is that the Lord has blessed you, whatever it's Him that has gave it to you. So we're simply just being obedient to His word. Malachi 3, starting at verse 8, says, Little oh, man, rock God. Yet ye have robbed me, but ye say, Where have we robbed thee? In tithes and in offerings. You're cursed with a curse, for you robbed me, even this whole nation. Yes, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, yes. that there may be meat in my house. Yes, and prove me now here with say the Lord of hosts. That I will not open you the windows of heaven and turn you out of blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, and he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground, neither shall the vine cast her fruit before the time of the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you blessed, for you shall be the lights of the land, saith the Lord of hosts. The word of the Lord is blessed. Everybody standing that can, everybody standing that can. Lord, we thank you. We bless you and we magnify you. We thank you for the opportunity to sow to this fertile ground. God, we know that it's going to be you that gives the increase. So we are praising you in advance, knowing that you're a man of your word. We trust you and we believe that you're going to open up the windows of heaven and pour us out a blessing that we have to share with others. And so it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Our leader is giving. Our leader is giving, and everybody following the instruction of our usher on today from the back to the front. Thank you so much.
announcements. It is the beginning of the year. And we are thankful that the Lord has allowed us to see another year. We're starting hitting the ground running. Amen. We we have a few announcements here. Uh, tomorrow, we have pastoral teaching and prayer Monday from 6 to 7 p.m. And then we will be having a our Azusa District setup meeting via Zoom that will start right at 7 p.m. right after we get out of there. So for those of us that have our phones and our laptops and our iPads and things of that nature, we can tune in to uh, our setup meeting, which will give information pertaining our district level. Then on the 10th, this Wednesday, Pastor will be preaching in Kansas City. Uh, this Wednesday, uh, Sister Toya, did we get that book? Reserved. Reserved, rather? Yes, ma'am. So we have uh, some transportation reserved. Uh, I've only heard back from a few people that want to travel with us. Uh, we would love for everyone to be able to go. Pastor would love to see your face. Um, if you're able to go this Wednesday to Kansas, we'll be riding down. Please, today, today, after service, uh, please reach out to me, come up to me, or talk to Sister Toya, uh, and let's work out getting that set. I believe that service starts at 7, and I'm going to say it's a three-hour drive. Um, so that will put us at leaving here. Pastor likes to be there, especially as the speaker. He likes to be there early, so let us plan to leave this church at 2 p.m. on this Wednesday. All right, our our setup meeting uh, for our local level, uh, which is open to the general population here. Uh, maybe that was a bad word. General assembly uh, would be a better phrase. Um, it will be open to all to come, and that'll be Wednesday the seventeenth. Big brother. Okay, so just like for the district, the setup meeting, uh, what we'll be doing is having calendars, and we will go through uh, all of our dates, um, and, and it's kind of a business meeting in short. I'll just say that it's a business meeting, and it's open. If you have any questions or you want to learn a little bit more about you know, the business side of things, please just be in attendance. That'll be this Wednesday, uh, Wednesday the 17th. Amen. Uh, Monday, our MLK program, that'll be Monday uh, the 15th, we'll be having our MLK program that starts at 10 a.m. Please bring your children. We've got an awesome guest speaker. Uh, he is 14 years old, Sir Michael Carrington Williams. Uh, he is the recent winner of the Iowa John Lewis Youth Leadership Award. And so that was presented to him by the Secretary of State's office. Uh, you don't want to miss that. You don't want your children to miss a, a dynamic speaker on that day. So please bring your children. Uh, we're also doing a project where we're wanting to put together 50 uh, packages of uh, hygiene things. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, such as toothpaste, deodorant, toothbrushes, mouthwash, uh, hand sanitizer, and uh, socks. So we want to get that together and we want to give that to Missionary Guy and Sister Tina. So please, uh, whatever you have, let's bring that together so that we can make uh, our goal is 50. And of course, if we have more, then we would love to make more. Amen. Uh, we're almost there. I appreciate your patience. Uh, Wednesday night, our regular Bible studies from 6 to 7. Uh, Sunday school is uh, at 9 to 10. And then we go into our morning worship at 10.30. Uh, and then when, uh, Monday night is pastoral teaching and prayer from 6 to 7. We want to pump up our services. As many people as you see here right now, we would love to see you and then some more. 
during our weekday services. How many of y'all eat once a week? Doesn't look like it. Amen. So with that being said, uh, and I'm talking about myself too, so I you know, just look good under this suit. But uh, we have to do this, you know, we have to eat spiritually more than once a week. And so when we come here, we're gathering together, and then we take that home, and we eat on that until the next service, and we study, and we dig deeper, and that's how we grow in the spirit. So that's why those services are important. Amen. So we thank God for that as I'm getting cut off. We thank God for our leader. So after the choir, after the selection, the musical selection, we want everybody to stand on your feet um, and receive our leader, great man of God, our, our shepherd, none other than Pastor Michael D. Cameron Sr. And you going to choir All right, we're going to have a selection. Thank you. Praise the Lord, everybody. All that we need is in Jesus. He satisfies my joy. He supplies life would be worthless Without him, oh, 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 in Jesus, I, I found praise him through. Whatsoever, 
Whosoever shall say thou fool, we have Raka and then thou fool. Raka is the same thing. That's what I'm getting a little twisted here. Forgive me. Thou fool shall be in danger of hell fire. So just by going at somebody with that type of judgment, you are in the danger of going to hell. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and there remember that thy brother has an all against thee, leave there your gift before the altar and go your way. First, be reconciled to your brother. And then come and offer your gift. Agree with your adversaries quickly. Oh, this is a deep one. While thou art in the way with him, least at any time the adversary deliver you to the judge. And the judge will deliver you to the officer. And thou will be cast into prison. Verily I say unto you, thou shalt by no means come out thence. And thou shalt have paid the uttermost for thing. May God add a blessing to the reading and the hearers of his word. Heavenly Father God, we come to you once again in the name of Jesus, thanking you for your goodness, your mercy, your love, your kindness. Thanking you for who you are, all that you've done, all that you're doing, and all that you're going to do. We're asking God in these few moments that you would have your way. For these are your people. They don't belong to me. There's nothing I can give them that'll help them unless it comes from you. So God, please, give us something today. Something that'll help us. Give us something. Oh God, I look to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, 
reconciliation is a reunion, a consolation, a reconcilement. Amen. Uh, it is resolving and mending. Look at somebody and say, Jesus can mend what's broke. Hallelujah. He can mend what's broke. And then it goes even as deep to say it's coming to an agreement or an understanding. To reconcile. And you know that's one of the biggest problems that we have. We understand ourselves, but it's hard to understand us. Are y'all hearing me? It's hard for us to understand others, especially if those others are looking at us, telling us something that we're doing wrong, and if they have a problem with us, it's hard for us to understand that. When the Bible tells us that we have to come to a place where we will even agree with our adversaries quickly. Are you understanding that? What is an adversary? An adversary is one that brings forth adversity. And an adversary is one that is against you. Uh, one that has a problem with you. One that is going against your program or going against the grain. Come on, somebody. Amen. The Bible talks about even Satan himself being our adversary. And he said, our adversary, the devil, is as a roaring lion. Going around seeking whom he may devour. I know y'all get tired of this, but y'all ain't listen to it yet. Amen. And when you look at that, it said, whom he may devour. Now y'all hear how kind and sweet that is? Somebody look at your neighbor and say, may I? And that's the way it is with the devil. But a lot of times, we have a case of the I can't help it. And what we do is we allow the devil to do whatever he wants to do. And we think that he is in control. Because we fear him. Oh, I don't hear nobody. We don't want to go against him. We don't want to resist him. Because what he has in all actuality feels good to us. Come on, somebody. So he is He's not a lion. He can't bite you unless you let him. Uh, well, may I? Seeking whom he may devour. Come on, somebody. Amen. But if we resist him, he's going to flee. Now understand that. Flee. He's going to run. Oh, I don't hear nobody. He's got to run from you. The problem is we're busy running from the devil. When the devil should be running from us. But it's a mess when he look at you and he don't see no power. It's a problem when he looks at you and he don't see Jesus. Come on somebody. That's why the word said greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. But a lot of us are just saying Jesus but we don't have him on the inside. And paraclete. Paracletos. In other words, he will walk right alongside of you. Come on, somebody. And if he's with you, oh my God, ain't no devil in hell. All on earth don't stand in your way. Not only will he walk right alongside you, but he will also be on the inside of you. Greater is he that's in you. I don't hear nobody. Hallelujah. But the Bible lets us know that we have to forget those things which are behind us. And we have to press toward the mark. Ain't that a problem? Sometimes we just simply can't forget. Can't forget how somebody rolled their eyes at us. 
Can't forget how they treated us. Can't forget. Can't forget how they dogged us out. Can't forget. It's a problem when we cannot forget. Oh, I don't hear nobody. And we got nerve to say, I'll forgive you, but I won't forget. And when we say that, we're not understanding what we're saying. The truth of the matter is, how do you know that you have forgiven somebody? You know you don't forgave them when they come in the room and you ain't feeling them. You know that queasy thing you feel with them? Uh, y'all know that thing? Y'all know that thing that you, you, you're talking and you're happy and all of a sudden you feel a little weight on you? You know you don't forgave somebody when you don't feel that anymore. I don't hear nobody. But in order not to feel that, you have to forget. Y'all ain't hearing me. Lord Jesus, help me today. Now, I said a lot of times what we do, I taught this on Wednesday. I'm getting ready to preach and get out of here. But I told them that a lot of times we use God as our last resort. And it's true, we use him as our last resort. We done tried everything else. The woman with the issue of blood spent all of her money. Oh my God. And, and she get, went to every doctor with everything and everybody she could think of that could heal her. And when she got through, she was broke. And didn't have anything. And a matter of fact, was still bleeding and so sick. I don't hear nobody. That, that she could barely get to Jesus. And she had to crawl in order to touch the hem of his garment. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. In other words, she only touched something that was touching Jesus. That's why we come to church. Come on, somebody. We want to touch something that's touching Jesus. We want to be where he is. We want, oh my God. But she tried everything. And then she tried Jesus. But what I want you to understand in that situation, if she had tried him first, she would have still had some money. If she had tried him first, she wouldn't have had to go through for 12 years. Oh my God. So she should have went to him first. For the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And all of his righteousness and all of these other things will be added unto you. Woo, I feel like preaching. Hallelujah. But even though we make God our last resort, we've been beat up. We've been used and abused. We've been lied on, cheated, talked about, mistreated. You scored again, talked about short you brought up, down almost to the ground, but come on somebody. Jesus. Now there's Jesus. Oh, and now that we have tried him as our last resort, we often do. I told him on the other day, I even thought about some of the songs we sing. Yes, sir. Love lifted me. Yes, Lord. Oh, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted. Oh, y'all ain't hear me. When nothing else could help. So you try everything else. And he's your last resort. But just because he was your last resort does not mean that you cannot make him your first priority. I feel like preaching. So a lot of times, oh my God, the truth of the matter is because we make him our last resort when our first resort comes back around. Even though they lied on us. 
They cheated us. They talked about us. They mistreated us. Y'all gonna hear me again. We end up going back to that first thing. We end up going back to the first thing. Even though it was no good for us. And we forget about the fact when nothing else could help. Love lifted. Oh, y'all don't hear me. I feel like preaching. So, we got to learn to make God our first priority. Oh, come on, somebody. And we got to quit trying to do it on our own. Quit trying to do it on your own. You try to do it your way, let me tell you something, your way is not going to work out with it. Your way ain't going to do nothing but bring more stuff, more junk, more anger, more malice, more hatred, more envy, more struggles when you do it your way. Because we're still talking about an eye for an eye. We're still talking about a two for a two. We're still talking about you hate me, I hate you. I don't hear nobody. When the Bible says love your enemies. Oh my God. Dealing with those that despitefully use you. Oh, I don't hear nobody. Yes, Amen. Yes. Some of us need to go back to Matthew, the fifth chapter. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. That's not what I'm preaching on today. I only got a few more minutes, so I better get on up out of here with that. Yes. Amen. But glory to God. Amen. We end up going back to the thing that we went to first. Yes, Lord. Even though it didn't work out for us. Yes. Even though it was no good for us. But I want you to be as faithful to God as God has been to you. So when we talk about reconciliation, yes, Lord. Ooh, see, that's what Jesus came for. Yes, Lord. Come on. To reconcile mankind, to restore a man to have and renew a relationship with mankind. So the reconciliation that we have to do is with God. Y'all hear me? We need to go back to our first love. We need to get back with God the way we used to be. When I first got saved, I couldn't stop waving my hands and crying. But now all I see is what everybody else is doing to mess up. I don't hear nobody. You lost your focus. And it's time for reconciliation. I feel like preaching. I'm about to preach just a minute. Hallelujah. Amen. We have lost our focus. When I first got saved, I used to pray day in and day out. I believed in fasting, but you let the pastor call a fast right now. We're going to hide in the other room of the church in prayer time and, oh my God, Jesus, Jesus. and eat right there. But you're wondering why you can't get a prayer through. You're wondering why you can't get a breakthrough. Amen, because you don't know how to keep your eyes on the prize. You don't know how to look to the hill from which cometh your help. Oh, because all your help comes from the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. But I want you to understand that with that type of attitude, with that type of going toward things, and then I for an eye, two for two, and even our type of praise. Come on, somebody. Amen. Instead of, amen, having what we would call a boomerang blessing. Come on, Jesus, I like that. We have arrow blessing. Jesus. Wow. Y'all understand that? Jesus. You got to because that. when you shoot an arrow, Come on, it goes. Yeah. But when you throw a boomerang, it comes back to you. Come on, yes, Come on somebody. Yes, and the way it's going to come back is from doing it from your heart. Yes. Oh, you ought to 
me with your mouth, but your heart so far from me. Honor me with your mouth, but your heart so far from me. You in now. Those are the same ones in the end that's going to say, Lord, Lord, I prophesied in your name. Lord, Lord, I was a right deacon. Lord, I played your music. Lord, I preached your word. And he's going to turn around and tell you, who are you? Get away from me. So it's imperative that we have it in our hearts. And in order to get it in your heart, you've got to learn how to stay on your knees. You're going to have to learn to go to the Lord in prayer. Hey, being our last resort and him dealing with us the way that he do it. Oh, we understand that we can call him when we need him. Our Father up in heaven. We can go to God in prayer. Somebody shout yes, Lord. Hey, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So, when I say forgetting those things which are behind, we have to know what to forget. Oh, sometimes we mess around and forget God instead of forgetting the mess. We have to leave the mess alone. We all have gifts. Everybody has a calling. But your gifts and your callings should be at the altar. I don't hear nobody. And I want you to understand that every now and again, when you bring your gift to the altar, you need to stay on the altar with it for a while. Somebody shout yes, Lord. Because the altar is for sacrifice. And the word said, present your body. Holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Not only is the altar for sacrifice. Oh, Abraham took his son to sacrifice him. Oh, giving his son because God said so. But Abraham said.
to where we need to be. I don't know if I should say it to you. I think I should make you say it to each other. No, I'm going to say it because I ain't scared of none of y'all. Stop me. Stop me. No good and well, you don't like somebody. No good and well, you've got issues and a problem. And God is telling you to leave your gift at the altar and get it together. Stop making the phone. And be healed. Be delivered. Come on, somebody. Be restored. And this is the good thing. It's your choice. Restoration is here for you. And you have a choice as to whether you want it or not. It's your choice. You think you're drumming now. You think you're a deacon now. 
You think you're preaching now. Amen. The anointing of God is going to start destroying yokes through what you do. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Y'all catch that? Yes, Lord. All right. Let's give the Lord a hand. Praise God. Okay. Cup. 
represents my blood. He gave it to his disciples. What can wash me whiter than snow? Nothing but the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thank you, Miss. 